We can start right now. Hit the start record, hit the song, we're ready to go. Hey guys, sports fans, welcome to another exciting edition of Torah Talk. Get in, get in the picture. Don't, don't worry. The You're the star, man. It doesn't yeah, matter well, if I'm in the picture. You're like or not a voice from in off the stage. Picture. You're like a voice. People like it that way. They like, you like kind of my low key presence. You know? <laughs> You're like a voice from beyond. I'm you know? understated. People like it that way. Let me see the monitor, so I can see what's going on. Okay, you're, you're a, a, a half a face and a beard. That's more than enough. More than enough. I feel unworthy to be anything more than half a face and a beard. And on this one, am I in it? No, that's... that's. There we go. Okay. Try to get, Couldn't try. get fairer than that. Get in, yeah, but get in the middle. Okay, so this is a year ago on this Torah portion. We started First of all, who are this. we? Who are we? People tune in, they don't even know what we are. I'm Levi Ben Abraham, this is Rabbi Rabs. Hello, and we are? Uh, doing Torah Talk. We are the Torah Talks. Okay. So, now, it's the it. one year anniversary. Hey, Mazel Tov. Mazel Tov, we made it. Thank you. And we didn't take each other's heads off. And, uh,. Tonight we start a uh, year two. Exactly. Because the first the first week that we were together last year was Parsha Sukkot, which is this week's Parsha. Mm -hmm. So we're starting the second time around. Yeah. So big Mazel Tov to us. Huh? A big round of applause for us. We're Crowd's going crazy. Going nuts. This is like the biggest thing ever. We're we're going into our second year, which is going to be a challenge. Yeah. Because we said so many hours of big things this last year. Right. Right. We got to right. find new material. Dig deep. Right. The good thing is the tour is infinite. There's exactly. an infinite amount of things to talk about on each week's Parsha, so we're going to have to uncover some of the infinity aspect of Torah because we can't say the same stuff we said last year, right? We're above repetition. We don't do uh, we right. don't do repeats, right? Now here's the thing: how it started last year. Do you remember? Well, I did an interview with you, and uh, first week of June of last year, and I said, "Hey, I've done this Torah talks thing before. Would you like to come over and discuss the weekly Torah portion?" Right. So it was actually your idea. Yeah. This is your genius on this. Yes. Yes, but then I searched the uh, archives, <laughs> and I discovered what his idea of Torah talks were. He would have two females sitting here, right? And each one of them was like, well, you know, the Bible to me was written by like 15 men in the desert, and, and I, it, it was enough to, to want to puke on, right? But I didn't, I didn't know that's where we were headed. <laughs> we're not headed there. I didn't see any women on the on the show. Right? Yeah, I know, I know. But uh, like the first time I was here, the first time I was here, you brought out Jacob Milgram. Yes. Who I was not familiar with because in the yeshiva world, in the in the Torah world, we don't we don't learn that one. Yeah. Right. But that's something you would learn at like University of Judaism yes. or. Uh, uh, um, What's that one that the Reform go to? It's the Hebrew, Hebrew Union College. Hebrew Union College. So this guy's bringing out, like, you know, what, what, what in the, the Jew, uh, according to authentic Judaism, what is considered almost heretical. Right. Okay, because here's like a conservative. And I'm like, well, what's he doing? Why is he bringing this out? And the reason why I remember it so specifically was this week, because there's a famous thing in Parshas Chukas. We talk about the, the red heifer, right. the paraduma. Right. And it says it's a, it's a, it's, it's, a mitzvah that nobody can understand. It says that even um, Shlomo Mela, who's the white, the Torah says he's the wisest of men who ever lived, said he understood everything, but the one thing he could not understand was the paraduma. Made no sense to him at all. He could not understand. But yet Jacob Milgram, he understood, <laughs> he understood it. I was like, okay. Yeah. So you were like, no, it's pretty, that's crap. This guy has an explanation, and right there. I knew that this guy was Trafe. I didn't. I never heard of him, but I knew he was Trafe. And I went home and I looked him up in Wiki, and he's Trafe. But I knew right there there was a problem because anyone who would have the balls or the chutzpah to say they understand something that Solomon, King Solomon, admitted that he didn't understand, is not somebody anybody can take seriously. And you just know it's pure Trafe. Well, I'm going to explain the red heifer tonight, so stay tuned. Oh, 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 Here we go. Here we go. This is my favorite thing. We got King Solomon, who Rabs has told now, Levy, two years in a row, admits that he didn't even understand Paraduma, and right. therefore we can't possibly begin to understand it. And yet, here tonight, 
the son of the of the apocalypse, the okay? the Messiah himself, the most the most uh, what's that uh, moral leader of the entire world is going to tell us through his revelation and his long beard, he's going to tell us what, what why the red heifer makes sense and he's going to explain it all out. Exactly. So stay tuned for that, folks. It should be exciting. <laughs> even though even though our our oral tradition teaches us that no one can understand it. Levi has gone beyond the oral tradition. Exactly. He's now delved into Kabbalah. Yeah. He's got his feet dipped in. Let, want to see his feet? I can show you his feet. Hey, right, he's there. See, he's got his feet here. He's dipped him into Kabbalah. And you, you had a relationship with Madonna. And now you understand the red heifer. So that's going to be big. So what do you think of the first year? What did I think of the first year? Uh, uh, I think there are a lot of good shows, a lot of good moments, uh, a lot of uh, aggravation for, for both of us, but uh, we, we stuck it out. It looked like a few times there we, we were not going to stick it out. But uh, I think I called it quits more than you did. <laughs> I, think I, I think I threatened to quit or quit like about two or three times during yeah, the year. Yeah. And I said, that's it, that's it, I've had enough. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, we had a terrible camp for the first nine months. Oh, Jesus. Oh, look, look who's in there. Uh, a big shout out. In the, uh, we have a few people in the in the room already. Garden Fun. That's Ellen. Oh, okay. So, hey, Ellen, how's it going? Hey, Henry and Yitzchak. Do you remember him from last summer? No. He was in, he's, uh, um, he, he's on the road to conversion. Uh-huh. And he lives in, a, in an Arab country in the Middle East. Holy cow! Yeah, and he wasn't able to tune in for the last uh, since last summer because he was in school. He was in high school all last su all last year, but he was with us at, at the very beginning, so he remembers those terrible can streams. He's in high school in an Arab country. Yeah, like Jordan. I, I can't say which one. Wow! But it's one of the uh, it's one of the ones in the Middle East. It's on the and, news. It's on the news. Does the <laughs> University of Judaism have a conversion program there? Uh, I, I, I think he's going to have to leave that country to convert. Okay, he's so actually on his way out. Okay, I hope so. He's on his way out. He's going to... He's no place for a Jew. No. There is no country in the Middle East that's, that's a place for the Jew. The only places for a Jew are United States and possibly Australia and Canada. That's it. I don't think a Jew has any place any place else. What do you think about that statement? I think any way you can practice your religion is fine. So Where else can you practice Judaism? Kazakhstan. Because uh, yeah, th true. You and you could also marry the number three hooker. <laughs> okay, so there's that. Uh, okay, so you you said it was it was interesting. There were some good moments. Yeah, there were some good moments. Uh, there was there was I think there were some uh, tremendous moments. I also wanted to point something out to you. Yeah. You thought I was so fascinating and interesting when you first met me and, and brought me into this. I remember when I was on. That even when you were on, you would go through my Facebook, and you would just like find things that I would post, and you found certain statuses really interesting, and then you would put them on your blog, and and I found that like once a week, things I posted on Facebook would make it to your blog, and I, and I wasn't sure if I was really comfortable with that because my blog, I mean my Facebook wall is basically to my friends, and you were right, posting right. them, well, and I was like, you know, what, whatever, I'm cool, I don't care, and and then like suddenly that like stopped, and now you never repost anything. You used to write like, oh, the rabbi's going to the beach today, and, and you put that on your thing, and you know, it's like, oh, Rabbi Rabs today made uh, controversial statements on his Facebook, you know, Rabbi Rab says on Facebook, and you used to put me up all the time, and I don't know why that stopped. I figure it stopped for one of two reasons, no, one of three, either just the the thrill burned out. You got a new toy or something, you know. It's right. like, you know, like you went through your rab stage and then it right. burned out, it fizzled. Uh, more likely, it's one of the two. Your friends didn't like me. Those are both true. I think your friends didn't like me, and they were like turned off by the fact that you were like so into me. Because I remember when we first started putting up the YouTubes the next mm -hmm. morning. Mm -hmm. The first YouTube, that could be a series like ten YouTubes mm -hmm. or six YouTubes mm -hmm. or whatever. The first one always got up from 100 to 200 views right. in the first week. The second one always got around 15. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was like 15, 14, 13, blah, blah, blah. Because, like, you know, only the hardcore people who want right. to watch the whole thing would go right. all the way to the end, right? Right. And, and then, like, the last one would have, like, four viewers. One of them was my nephew, right? Right. They were all, if you didn't, if you weren't related to Rabbi Rebs, you weren't on the last one. It was like, right. you know, you, 